serving as a mission president was a wonderful opportunity. It was a unique opportunity. And it was a change for me because I had worked with young people through the youth programs at BYU, but I'd always worked with them short term. And suddenly I was working with young people long term. It wasn't just for a week. It wasn't just for a, an event. It was through a year and a half, through two years. And so I was able to see growth that went beyond the surface. It was deep growth. And I was able to see, I was able to see young people mature in every aspect of their lives, spiritually, of course, but also socially and intellectually. I saw missionaries who couldn't read or could barely read when they got to their missions, who ended their missions loving books and loving reading and loving the scriptures. I saw missionaries who were so shy and so backward that they struggled to even make eye contact with someone. And yet they left with great, a great deal of confidence. So I saw kids grow intellectually. I saw them grow socially and emotionally. I saw missionaries who were leaving home for the very first time and who were so nervous and frightened find their voice and find their place in the, in the kingdom. And so that was a wonderful experience for me to be able to see growth over time and to be able to see not just a one-time turning point, but to be able to nurture and foster that growth over a, a long period. The bonds that are created in a mission, the bonds between a mission president and his missionaries, between his wife and the missionaries, are bonds that last a lifetime and beyond. I feel that with my own mission president, and I feel that with the missionaries that I had the privilege to serve with. I'm connected to them. They belong to me. There is a, there is a, a connection that is so real. It's not that we get together and go bowling every Thursday, but when we do connect, we feel a closeness because our relationship is built on the things of eternity. Our relationship is built on the truths of the gospel. And our relationship is built on the fact that we are disciples of Jesus Christ and that we are unified in that love of the Savior. And that gives you a relationship that goes way beyond anything you form in high school, way beyond anything you form in college, way be beyond being friends with the neighbors. It gives you a depth of relationship that is very unique and uh, very special in this world. That relationship, that circle of friendship strengthens you. I love it that my missionaries are still in touch with each other. I love it that they're there for each other, pulling for each other, helping each other. And I love that I'm still engaged in their lives and that they're still engaged in my life. And that uh, we don't just get together and say, oh gosh, do you remember when we ate empanadas on the Independence Day for Chile? I mean, we don't get together and relive those memories. We get together and feel a bond that's as real today as it was in the mission because we're engaged in the same cause, building the kingdom of God on earth. And uh, as long as we're bonded together in that, then we are bonded for life and, and even into the eternities. Serving as a mission president was a real learning experience for me because you think you know what a mission president does because you see some mission president speaking at a state conference or you remember your own mission president and having an interview with him. But you don't really know exactly everything that's involved until you're thrown into it. And then you suddenly realize that the calling you have is not just a church calling that takes some of your time. It is a life calling that just eats up every moment of your life, early mornings, late nights, um, dealing with problems, of course, as they come up, but also 
uh, feeling the joys of seeing people come into the church, attending baptismal meetings. I mean, not only do you have your missionaries who are your primary responsibility, but suddenly you're worried about their families and you're worried about the people they're teaching. And so this circle just keeps growing and growing and growing of people you have to pray about because suddenly you're praying for everybody who's in the lives of your missionaries and and it just becomes this huge circle of, of love. Actually, the day-to-day -day of being a mission president is kind of like that movie Groundhog's Day. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but the guy wakes up and just relives the same day over and over and over. And for me as a mission president, it was kind of like that same thing because everything in the mission would revolve around a transfer. And so in a transfer, you'd have missionaries leave, missionaries come, then you would have your uh, zone conferences and you'd have your interviews and you'd have your, you know, you, then you'd have your farewell, you'd have your meetings with the missionaries who are completing a year and then you'd have your meetings with the missionaries that are finishing up. And I mean, then all of a sudden the next transfer would come and you'd just start all over again. And so it was... Uh, it was kind of like you were reliving the same transfer over and over and over again. But it never got old because you were reliving it with new people. You would be able to see the growth of the missionaries going home. And then the very next day, you'd go pick up new missionaries and you'd see how far they had to come. And you'd know what was ahead of them. And, and, uh, and so your life was full of of uh, the same routine and a very busy routine, but it was also full of, of new people and people experiencing a lot of firsts. The first time they're, they're doing something, the first time they're teaching, the first time they're giving a talk in Spanish, the first time they are, uh, you know, challenging someone to baptism or extending a baptismal invitation, the first time that they are realizing that they can survive away from home, the first time that they are having a fight with a companion and trying to work through that. And a mission is just a lot of first times. The first time someone says a prayer, the first time someone feels the spirit. The first time someone is striving to break a bad habit, the first time that somebody feels successful in doing that, the first time that somebody feels like perhaps he can be forgiven, the first time that somebody feels the joy of having a prayer answered the first time that somebody decides that there's more to life than just getting up and going to bed and living for the party on the weekend. The first time someone realizes that there's a place for him or her in the church. I mean, all of those firsts just come together and create a tapestry that is so rich and full of color and full of depth. And, and so the routine is pretty much the same, but the people that fill that routine and the experiences that revolve around that routine uh, never get old. They just become a joy. And then when you get home from the mission, then all of a sudden you're going to marriages and getting baby announcements and, and uh, graduation announcements. And, and you continue to experience all those firsts with all those wonderful missionaries who become part of your family.